thank you very much, uh, Bradley Bulls, for being with us with TNN TV. And you know, your background undefeated fire. You're going on to your next uh, fight coming up on the November the 5th. It's uh, Plymouth Guild Hall, and your opponent, what do you know about your uh, opponent? Uh, not a massive amount, to be honest. Um, I found out last night, he's originally African, I believe. He lived in Switzerland, now he lives in the UK. I believe he's had nine fights, um, doesn't get stopped very often, orthodox, my height. But to be honest, I don't look into it too much. It might change in a week, it doesn't really matter, as long as I'm ready myself. I put in the work in the gym. Then I'm happy. That's then right. you're ready. And uh, how have the uh, preparations for you gone so far? It's been really good. I, this training, I've, I've been really, really motivated. I've moved closer to my gym. Um, I'm enjoying my sessions, even though they absolutely ruin me. My coach destroys me in the gym, but I keep coming back and I'm enjoying it. Got good lads in the gym, and it's um, it's good preparation. Each time we do a training camp, I just get better and better at doing them. So I'm happy. Fantastic. And your weight, you're fighting at 160 uh, pounds, which is the middleweight limit. Yes. Uh, how easy is it for you to sort of you know make that weight uh, come come fight night? Um, I'll be honest. I'm, I don't walk around at my fight weight like most fighters don't. Um, I believe my big middle weight, even though I don't look it. Um, but. For me, it's just being consistent in the gym and being disciplined. No pasties, no beers, no having that little dessert after your meals, and all these things add up. And uh, and it's yeah, it's it's not really easy to do, but it's not really hard to do. It's it's discipline, and I feel strong when I get in the ring, and that's what's that's what's important. So, uh, what do you think are your best attributes as a boxer in the ring? Um, I would say my power has got to be up there. I believe I hit very hard um, with both hands. Um, I believe my counter punching is quite good, which I think is probably quite underrated. Um, I do like to draw out a lead and then take advantage. Um, and then I would say my head movement is it's not all about offense, you've got to have a bit of defense, I do think. As time's going on, and I'm working with my coach today, my head movement, my defense, and I'm, I'm sparring people like Linus, and if you, you just see Linus, it's very, very slippery, and you tend to take things away from these guys that you're sparring, and that's something I'm adding to my game, a good bit of, good bit of head movement and a good defense, so it's good. Yeah, it will prolong your career, right? The better defense will... Protecting the moneymaker. <laughs> that's absolutely correct, and uh, in terms of uh, stylistically, who do you think uh, you're most like, like another boxer that you sort of either aspire towards or look up to, etc.? Um, I, I can't really say that I think I definitely box like him, but I, I watch fighters like GGG, who's my favourite fighter at the minute, and it really appeals to me. Seek and destroy style where he's, he's pressing for to draw out a lead and then to, to punish him. He's, he's not there to score points, he's there to hurt you. And I like that. But I also like Pino Alvarez with the head movement and the, and the good counter punching. So somewhere, if them two had a baby and I was that baby, it'd be lovely, but you can only have it. That'd be awkward, <laughs> to say the least. But they're both very good at cutting the ring off. So sort of yeah. like a, a seek and destroy uh, type Start of style. Entertaining. Great. And, um, what are the differences between the uh, the amateur game and the professional ranks, in your opinion? Because you are a decorated amateur, so what yeah. do you think is different in the pros? Um, to be honest, you probably hear it quite a lot, it's more of the business side. Professional is definitely more of a business, amateur is more for the accolades, it's more for the titles and the trophies. Um, and it's, it's more of becoming a salesman and, a, and a, an event planner and all these other things you have to add into being a professional. As an amateur, you just turn up, you have your fight, you do your best, you go to the gym, and that's it. But as a professional, it's, and with the day and age of social media, it's learning about business as well. But at the end of the day, we're fighters, we just want to fight, and this is something we have to adapt to and progress on and develop as fighters because it benefits us definitely. Fantastic. And uh, do you have any specific plans for 2018, 2019 going forward? Because um, it's almost the end of the year now, it's drawing to a close. Yeah, I'm going to box once again this year. Um, once more to start next year, and then I would not mind a title over eight rounds or start edging towards a southern area title shot. Just something that I'd absolutely love, and I think that's a very realistic aim. I'm, I'm 7 0 at the minute, soon to be 8 0. Um, 
and that, that's the place where I believe I'm going to be and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win titles at that level or higher. Fantastic. And uh, how did you meet with your uh, promoter, Goodwin Promotions? Um, someone put me in contact when I was an amateur. Uh, I finished my amateur seasons and it was clearly the right time to turn professional. And uh, I've heard really good things about him. He's an, he is a really nice guy. He's, uh, he's got the best, your best interest at heart. And uh, yeah, yeah someone put me in contact with him and it seemed like the right opportunity and the right decision. And it's so far so good. So it was like a really good fit, basically. Yeah. yeah. And uh, well, how did you, uh, you know, meet your uh, coach, uh, Terry Stewart, and what is he actually like to, to work with? Uh, <laughs> uh, Terry Stewart. My, uh, well, originally, my promoter put me in contact with him. Um, and in boxing, like you meet all these people and you do all these things. And, I believe it, it, you meet special people like through through boxing. And Terry's one of those guys. Like, he's the most genuine, one of the best guys I've ever met in the sport. I love him like a dad. And he's took me in like his son. Um, even though he's absolutely ruined me in the gym every day, but I know he does it because we both want the same thing at the end of the day, and that's how it is. Yeah. I, I see how happy it makes him when I win, and I want to win just to make him happy. He's, he's a brilliant guy, and, um, and he's, he's brutal at the same time, but you wouldn't have it any other way. You want it to be disgustingly hard because you know he does it for you to win. He wants yeah, to he pushes you out of love, I guess. He's evil. He just sits there in the dark, <laughs> plotting these training sessions like a wizard. What just, to make you do next? Yeah, he's horrible, but it works. So I'm happy. Great. And then how did you meet your friend and sparring partner, Linus? We saw you go, you know, hard sparring grounds just now. Yeah. You know, how did that come about? Um, as soon as I turned up at this gym, um, he was on here training with Terry. We turned pro at similar times. We almost actually boxed each other in the amateurs. Uh, we got matched up and then I think the show got pulled or one reason or another, no one's fault, it just didn't happen. But I remember hearing his name and I was going to box him. Yeah. Uh, and it was weird to walk into the gym and I'd be like, oh, I know you. Um, and it's brilliant for me. We're in the gym together. We're both at a very similar level. We're 6 and 0. And it's very, very competitive. We're right opposite styles. He's very slick. And I'm more of a come forward, aggressive. And uh, yeah, it's good. It's good to have the opposition in the gym, and he's, we, we help each other out as you are. Yeah, we could see he gave you really good sparring. He's very sort of energetic, etc. So you yeah. have to be on your toes all the time. Gives you good advice, and we bring each other on. And if it was easy in the gym, you wouldn't have better because it's that hard. It's going to make me a load back. I love like it. it. Pushes you both on. Yeah. Propels, propels you both on. Definitely. Now, in your personal opinion, do you think sort of punches are made or born? Or I think I think personally. To, to an extent, you are born with that one punch knockout power. But then, to another extent, you can develop. Scientifically, the studies will show that you can increase punching power through strength conditioning, improved technique, um, and training properly. So, naturally, you might not be a knockout puncher, but you can work on it and you can add percentage to it. But some people, look at Tyson. He was a knockout puncher. It was so deep in his in his bones that it's, that's the way it is. But then other people have to work on it. That's and some people will always carry that punch. And Tyson carried that punch even when he was past his prime. Definitely. When he knocked out Francois Bosa, etc., etc. People thought he was done, <laughs> but he still he, he wasn't done basically when it came to his yeah. raw brutal, raw brutal. power. And uh, the same thing about the chin, a lot of people were criticizing Amir Khan's chin, etc. Yeah. But do you think that's also another thing that fighters are born with? You know, genetics, like Triple G says, yeah, it's my genetics, etc. Or do yeah. you think there's other things that he does? You, you see Triple G saying that, oh, it's my genetics. And then you will go watch a training montage of Triple G. He's doing neck weights. 50% of the time, all the time, all these different exercises. But I do think he's right though. I think to an extent it's what you're gifted with genetically. Um, some people have just got that durability, but then you can add percentages on. So you do all these exercises and stuff and it might help you just a little bit, but at the end of the day you're sort of born with what you can take. So it just basically it. builds up? Yeah, you can add to it. In terms of uh, your favourite uh, UK boxer and fighter, who would that be and why? UK boxer and fighter. Um, do you know what? Recently, I'm starting to like Chris Eubank Jr. Oh, yeah. Only recently. And 
hands. I'm starting to rate him as well, and you can't help it. I'm not, he's not the slickest boxer in the world, but he's got you can't he's got a really good engine, and I think it's really entertaining. And that appeals to me. I like I like knockouts, I like action. And he's starting to uh, he's starting to appeal to me, so I'm starting to like the So what are your thoughts on uh, his uh, you know immediate match with uh, George Groves who defeated uh, Mr. Cox just the other night? Do yeah. you think that's gonna be a good close fight or do you think that uh, Chris Eubank's gonna you know walk 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 it basically? Yeah, oh I don't know. I think it's the closer it gets, the more I'm starting to think Eubank has a chance. And if you look at the styles of the fighters, obviously styles make fights, Groves is bigger, slicker, more accurate, better jab, better boxing skills. Um, and I think the early stages of the fight are going to suit Groves amazingly. But Groves tires. It's no secret. And Eubank gets stronger as it goes on. Like I just said it then, he's got an amazing engine. So the longer it goes on, the worse it gets for Groves. But Groves has that knockout power as well. Yeah, he's a very hard uh, hitter. He's a hard hitter and he's a big super middleweight. And Eubank coming up from middleweight, he's not massive middleweight. So I think I'm on the side, I'm sitting on the fence. It's going to be entertaining the for the UK fans, I would imagine. It'd be brilliant, yeah. Fantastic. And what, did you, what were your thoughts on uh, the biggest fight of the year, uh, Canelo versus Triple G? Do you think it was a draw? Or? Um, do you know what? I think GGG won by about two rounds. I think Canelo's the cash cow, isn't he? And like I said before, boxing's a business. And it's quite sad, really. It sort of takes, yeah, it takes the credit away. And I, don't, I don't really agree with it. I don't like it. But if this fight happened two, three years ago, GGG probably would have stopped him. But you can see he's getting old now. He's not. Yeah, 35, 36, right? So. And that's, yeah. Um, so it's maybe slowing down just a little. Yeah, and in the rematch. Maybe he gets worse than GGG. Canelo's Canelo getting more perhaps. into his prime, and he's uh, you've got to give him his credit as well. Canelo, he is a sick, sick boxer. Yeah, he's got great, great skills. Fantastic, yeah. fantastically gifted, uh, gifted fighter. And we'd just like to ask you on a, a personal note: Do you have any like hobbies or interests outside of the, uh, the the boxing ring, such as maybe entertainment, things like you know uh, movies? TV, films, books, or video games, or things like that. Uh, what do you do in your downtime, basically? Uh, so when, when I have, a, I go back to Cornwall normally, and when I go back to Cornwall, I tend to go to the beach. I tend to go to some friends. Um, I like a bit of kayaking. Okay, so socialising. Socialise. I do a bit of cliff jumping. Um, but I'm just more, I'm a family oriented person. I've moved away from my family, from my career, so any chance I get, I like spending time with my nephews and stuff like that. It's, does, it's good fun, yeah. Does the, does the family ever worry, you know, the, the, the chosen path as a sort of a boxer, etc.? Do they think it's a bit, you know, rough, <laughs> rough or dangerous? Or my really? mum don't like it. I spoke to my mum saying, I was like, Mum, you're going to get ringside seats. She's like, I don't like it. I was like, why? She was like, because I can see everything. I was like, it's brutal, mate. You're going to get used to it. I've been doing it for 40 years. Like, yeah. Yeah, I should, you should tell you know, it's the, the opponent you should worry about, right? <laughs> Not you. But uh, you know, what would be your favourite uh, destination in the world if you had to sort of go and visit some place? Where would you go, and, and why? Destination. I would absolutely love to go to Bali. Oh, Bali, yeah. Bali. Uh, I've got I've got friends that go out there and party and stuff like that. My brother's been out there. And I'd like to go there and the island hop and do all the touristy things, see all the sights. Yeah, you've got that it's island of a thousand temples, right? So. All of that, all the tourist stuff. It's on my list. It's right at the top. It'll probably happen sooner yeah. rather than later. Bali sounds sounds amazing, especially with cold British weather. You can't go wrong with uh, can't go wrong with Bali. And uh, if we could just ask your favourite boxing contest from history or even recent memory and you know why that contest was special for you? Um, I'm going to say Ricky Hatton versus uh, Costa Zoo. Oh, okay, yeah. Because um, at the time, I think I was around 13 or 14 years old and uh, Ricky Hatton, I was the biggest fan of Ricky Hatton. And that was his triumphant moment in his career, if you look back at his career. And I was just a, such a big fan of him and it was... At the time, it was. I think he was the underdog, and yeah. he was. It was in his head that he was just going to win. There was no way about it, and he was 100% non-stop. And I think he stopped him in the 11th. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it was beautiful to watch. I loved that. No, it was a great, great, fantastic fight. And I would just like to ask, um, in terms of um, just cars, are you into cars? And if you had a dream car, you know, what would it be? <laughs> Do you know what? I'm not. I'm not massively into cars. Like, it doesn't consume me or anything, but. When, if I win a few more fights and the budget gets a bit higher, 
I was really like a G wagon. Okay. It's so no proper G. Like a Mercedes, basically. Yeah, yeah like the proper gang. Mm. Not a Range Rover, a G wagon. G -Wagon. Proper <laughs> gangster bus. Well, it's, it's different, definitely. It's a different style, isn't it? Very yeah. expensive. Yes, yeah, so no, we're big, big fans of cars on the channel, so hence we, yeah. wanted to, we wanted to ask that. And then uh, finally, you know, in terms of uh, how can fans obtain tickets uh, to the fight on uh, November the 5th? Is um, it available online or for social media? There's, I have an online ticket link on all my social media platforms on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, just at Brad Pauls and then in the bios and pin tweets and stuff at the top of the, with the link in there. So get at me for tickets. Um, we'll bombs away, fireworks on November 5th. Okay.